in software engineering we are talking about software maintenance software maintenance maintenance means keeping the thing object or anything working that is the product is already being made now you need to clean it you need to polish it and you need to keep it running so this is the last phase of sdlc all these phases software is being delivered deployed and now the maintenance activity will only start after the delivery so software maintenance is any kind of change or modification to a software product or a system after it has been delivered to the customer or the end user this is software maintenance please remember maintenance is the most time taking and effort taking task involved in the sdlc it is being said that change is the only thing which never changes so change which doesn't change is inevitable since maintenance means change maintenance also is inevitable for any kind of product i'm not talking about the software product any kind of product if you are having an air conditioner you don't uh, go for the servicing the filter will get dust and it will be useless after some time so maintenance is everywhere most products need maintenance because they have the wear and tear like car now in the car say 6 to 8 months you have to get it serviced there will be some wear and tear in the machinery they basically the tires mainly and these are the wear and tear mainly mainly the product or hardware products but software products they don't have this kind of a problem that is they do not need maintenance on this type of count or account so there will not be a problem like this software maintenance has something other to deal with many people they think that if the bad software is created you need a lot of maintenance but this is absolutely wrong the opposite is true bad product what do you do you just throw it away you don't maintain it but the good products best products they are maintained they have longevity so they are used for a long time i'll give an example see when unix unix came it was uh, coded or implemented in assembly language now we have known about 885 886 this microprocessor language etc now when c language came the unix was rewritten in c language why because we wanted to keep working on unix so we don't throw it away this was a good product so we need to maintain it because it is going for that from the time it was being created till now software maintenance takes various types this can be done in four types preventive i have written uh, first because this is more related to the hardware stuff but still if you are being asked you have to talk about all these in software maintenance as well software maintenance or keeping this software up to date we need certain maintenance first is corrective adaptive perfective and preventive corrective adaptive perfective preventive preventive is the first kind of maintenance because this is the fire cannot happen corrective is fire happens then you uh, do certain thing to you know to get away from it so corrective maintenance adaptive maintenance perfective maintenance and preventive maintenance these are the four types of the maintenance software maintenance corrective maintenance is all about bug fixing so corrective means to correct it if that means something is wrong if something is wrong you need to correct it if you deliver the software to the user now user start using it the user observe that oh there are certain problems here so he'll come back to you he'll say oh i i'm facing problem here now you will fix the bugs then for example a uh, file transfer you have given him now the speed you wanted you are not getting it you will again go back to the developer and he will say oh i need uh, enhancement on in the performance so this is a kind of corrective maintenance well it comes under perfective also but this this corrective maintenance is correction of certain things 
वट इज परफेक्टिव मेंटेनेंस परफेक्टिव मेंटेनेंस इज ऑल अबाउट एनहेंसमेंट एंड स्केलेबिलिटी दैट इज यूजर इज यूजिंग Now he wants. Oh, he say, oh, these features are missing. I need these features. Without this, I will not be able to work. So, perfective is the new features addition required by the user, or certain functionality he is using. He is he is saying, no, it should be on the left, not the right, or I need to change this functionality. So, the customer demands the change in the functionality, and that when you do, that is called as a perfective kind of maintenance. Okay. so it's all about enhancement and scalability in perfective maintenance then comes the adaptive maintenance also called as porting and migration so the software product needs this porting or migration or adaptive maintenance when customer need the product to run on new platform or a new operating system for example windows 10 you have now you have windows 11 you upgraded your system because it was free and the microsoft was asking for it now certain software are not working on windows 11 so what do you do you will go back to the developer or the tech company and you'll say oh this software is not working so the soft the software team or the maintenance team they have to do the adaptive maintenance so that this software work on windows 11 as well so new platform new hardware new uh, configuration new operating system this kind of maintenance is adaptive now you have a product now you you give gave the interface for the serial port serial port connection now somebody comes and says no 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 i want the parallel port also so this need some interfacing changes this is adaptive maintenance and there is a preventive maintenance see preventive maintenance is corrective is fire has happened now you need to uh, say fire fight but here no make the code do something so that fire cannot even happen cannot even occur so the way you code the way you design you be aware that the maintenance activity should be as least as possible so preventive maintenance is all about software reengineering data restructuring code restructuring the effort distribution with respect to maintenance if you see different type of uh, maintenance 50% of the maintenance is perfective 28% of the part is adaptive and 22% corrective maintenance effort is used you see here requirement design implementation testing what is this part 67 almost part is your maintenance part what are the causes for maintenance what are the reasons why do we do the software maintenance why it is required first thing is while you are developing a software that is you have uh, the requirement analysis that you design and on the basis of that design the software is coded now the thing is that you are uh, solving a particular problem of a user now there is a problem which cannot be foresee like why to get problem never people have thought about it and these kind of problem can come any time so if you are not able to anticipate then during de development when the product is already ready and it is being delivered and this problem comes up then you need to do the maintenance rate of hardware obsolescence software never dies if you take a car good car 10 15 even 50 years the car is going to die car car is not immortal because it is hard it is a hardware it it will uh, succumb to its wear and tear but software never does but maintenance is necessary for software performing low level functions that is the legacy software the software which has been made they have they are big complex projects and now it is being used widely before 1990 no one ever thought that everyone will be having mobile in after 2020 now we can think that the kids are born with the mobiles with the cellular phones the smartphones so you need to see here that the software needs to be updated maintained every time whenever other software it works with the change okay let me give you your example that your software is being delivered now you say uh, usb it will work with usb 2.0 say usb 3.0 usb 4 5 6 10 say 10 has come the speed is say 10 gbps or 100 gb 100 gbps now it is your Uh, liability to change the software to adjust working with this new usb 
See, Windows 10, you are always going to Windows 11. It is free update. But what about the software you are working is not working on Windows 11. It was previously working on Windows 10. The software product may need maintenance when the operating system changes. Or user want existing software to run on a new platform. For example, Windows 10 to Windows 11 is a new software, this new operating system. A new hardware is employed. A new configuration is employed. So if you have 10 functionality, the user can come, he says, oh, two more functionality I want. Or the government has changed some scheme or some numbers or interest rate or any other thing. So you need to enhance the feature. So you need to do the maintenance. Like our human beings evolved from chimpanzees or you know monkeys, etc. We have evolved like this. And we are still evolving. The so software is also like that. Software is evolving every time. The time it was conceived till now, it will be in the process of evolution. Every software product continue to evolve after its development. Change is the only thing which never changes. That is, we need to make it evolve through the maintenance efforts for the better. Evolving is making it better for the different environment, configuration, functionality, feature, usage. So there will be some change proposal. There will be some change request always coming from the people uh, or the end user and you need to change it, make it better. Larger software uh, product, the complex which are being used by numerous people. Now this software was made with immense amount of money. Now it not be viable or feasible to replace it entirely. It will cost more. So better is to maintain it. Like artificial intelligence. Or now the Google products have AI involved. But 5-10 years back they were not having that. Still they were popular. Laws of maintenance. So there are certain laws, the rules for the software maintenance. And what are these maintenance before that? See, there will be a lot of old software. The software which is made today will be old tomorrow. So there will always be a lot of old software that will need maintenance. The user will want, the user will change, the, the technology will change, the thought process will change. So the software has to change. And if you are, have made a good product, it will be maintained because the bad product will simply be thrown away in the dustbin. So there are certain laws of maintenance. The first one is Lehman's first law. The first law says, see these laws are very common sense law. But since he has predicted and presented in their laws, the first law is software product must change continuously. If they are not changing continuously, they will be useless. That is, they are useful only when the software products are changing continuously, evolving, modifying continuously and becoming progressively useful. Otherwise, they will be useless. The second law of Lehman says, when software is maintained, its structure degrades and it always happens. You know the regression testing? Why do we do it? If you you know, hire a maintenance guy and he's not able to maintain properly. For one part is having a problem bug. He tries to fix it and he creates 10 more bugs. For that, you need to put a lot of effort in the maintenance phenomena because you, you really want to avoid this kind of regression or propagating or bug, say, network strategy. Then the Lehman's third law. Over a program's lifetime, it, its rate of development is approximately constant. There is no peak, there is no trough. Sometimes you are de developing a lot, sometimes you are not developing, sometimes you are changing the software, sometimes you are not modifying it. So, right from the requirement, design, coding, testing, deployment and maintenance, the software development, rate of development with time remains constant. Legacy code. There are major maintenance problems. So, what software, what system has already been made years ago and what are the ma major maintenance problems we perceive or we, we encounter? If, first of all, the maintenance engineer, when he sees this code, he finds something. Well, first is the unstructured code. 
you have bad programs you have written go to you have lot of nested if if else multiple if else looping construct you have big procedures like 1000 2000 5000 100 100000 line so that means bad program you have very very high coupling and low cohesion so this maintenance programmers they might not have the knowledge or they have insufficient knowledge for the maintenance of this sort of a system that is he might not be having enough knowledge of the application domain so software maintenance as the name has uh, grown evolved it is it has taken a bad name maintenance means you have a problem then only you do the maintenance the so software maintenance is like a having a a bad image sometimes a good software means always a good software means you have good work products like the software product but not only the code or the source code you have the documents as well like the software requirement specification design document with all the umls dir umls test plan user manual the installation guide the compilation guide there are so many documents which will which will help the coder and the maintainer but sometimes the document is absent out of date or even insufficient for anybody to actually understand even if a very good maintenance guy you have uh, hired he will not be able to find anything to do so i will show you are these all i'm just giving you a hint here there is go to here this is very bad modularization low cohesion high coupling we are always going for high cohesion and low coupling and then we have nested if else the person is going to fall through his mind when he sees it is sufficient knowledge bad image of maintenance that is the maintenance guy may not be good or if he is good then the the software he is going to maintain is not good in terms of the documentation in terms of the content he need to understand so maintenance team is usually different from the development team not always but most of the time you will always see oh the guy has gone to america why he is maintaining the software he has gone gone to the offshore to maintain the software so there is a different team even after reading all the documents sometimes it is very difficult to understand that thing is done in which way in certain way because they have not created the software they are just trying to understand the software what was the intent of that people those people who have actually made it there is one more thing it is a, a human uh, say limitation if i read a book i am talking about myself i start reading i just sleep so if you are be provided those documents and if you start reading may not be uh, possible you will extract each and every information so maintainers may be very good in writing code they are very good at programming or but problem is they may not be good in understanding some code which is written even by other person you can write code understand it may make any code how about knowing the code from others detecting the problem where it is the bugs the modifying the design code or the documentation is again very difficult by a second person and the most important part which comes as an interpersonal skill working with the end user trying to understand try to solve this cannot be a cup of tea for everyone so working with end user is also a hurdle maintenance nightmares these are the things which will always be there and giving nightmares to the maintainers first is the use of go tos this is a simple code you see it is written in a basic one more code in a c so you have a go to now previously when it came go to everyone was thrilled oh my god what a looping construct oh this has solved a lot of problem but it has created a lot of problem this is a go to it just shift the program control to anywhere even a big aircraft succumbed to this problem and many people died that is why in bisra standard they say no go to at all then the procedures we are thrilled to write a long long code oh i written this much of code but there are lengthy procedure what about modularization what about the cohesion so procedure should be small should be maintainable should be testable poor and inconsistent naming now you just write name like you make your emails earlier my cracking uh, insta story like this. this is the name of your variable and we have seen this the kind of names 
फंक्शन इज ऑफ एड नाउ यू आर राइटिंग योर से योर एफ बी पीक दिस काइंड ऑफ नेम आई यूज नॉर्मली द पुअर एंड इनकसिस्टेंट नेमिंग इज वन ऑफ द नाइट मेयर पुअर मॉड्यूल स्ट्रक्चर मॉड्यूल स्ट्रक्चर एंड इवन दी इंटरडिपेंडेंस नेटवर्क ऑफ दी मॉड्यूल्स दीज आर दी मिकी प्रॉब्लम इन डिजाइनिंग सो वीक क्वेश्चन एंड हाई कपलिंग see when you are making modules and see here you have different modules and they have a weak cohesion they are not doing a single work they are actually taking work from different module giving them taking them so there is high coupling also but here a good good modularization good prog program uh, structure or module structure means a module should do what it was intended to do single work that is we need high cohesion high cohesion you want normally we find weak cohesion when multiple modules are interacting with each other we need low or least possible interaction that is called the low coupling but we find high coupling deeply nested nested conditional loops we have lot of statement conditional statement if else for while do while go to is almost finished now so these are there so when we program we tend to put all our logic mind brain in making this kind of structure what will happen the mind will fall like this the person is falling here functions having side effects we create functions which are meant for good made for good but they are actually creating side effects they are actually creating trouble in other codes other functions how to do better maintenance software maintenance this is the last phase in the software development life cycle but it is the most important phase so how do we do it we need to know the program first either it is a software or a system the understanding is the key then we can do the reengineering the reverse engineering and the forward engineering they both are combined and they are called as the reengineering so we have to find out in this reverse engineering the design so we need to recover the design from the code and the specification from the design then the reengineering as i said first going back reverse engineering engineering and then going forward that is the forward engineering so these are the steps to maintain to do the maintenance properly if the project is complex big and if it cost more to actually replace the software so it's better to maintain there are different maintenance process models depending upon the complexity and the cost and various other factors of a software under question so the maintenance activities we can divide this maintenance activities into two parts they both are done but one is productive the other is non productive non productive means no work product is coming out of it that is this is the time a maintenance guy or a maintainer he would like to understand he would he would try to understand the design the code and of course the intricacy how the software was made this is the understanding part so it will not produce any kind of result but the productive activities in maintenance is analysis design and coding modification that is you are actually trying to learn the code trying to come up with the design and then the requirement specifications reverse engineering in software so how to do this see if you are in a car and if you use the reverse gear your car goes backward same thing here you are at maintenance right now now you are only having the source code now sometimes you may have the additional document or information but you are analyzing the pro program code and recovering from it the design and finally the requirement specification the reverse engineering is a very important maintenance technique why because there are certain software which are unstructured they don't have proper documentation documentation is one of the work product of any kind of deliverable of software 
and they these software were not developed using proper software engineering principles not properly designed not properly coded so the first we need to do the cosmetic changes like your face you want to go to the party you will put some cream and some powder like the talcum powder etc so you want to improve the readability you want to improve the structure and the understandability first of all before you can actually try to learn the code and come up with a design of this code and finally the requirement specification so we need to find out first clear the code then try to extract the design and then the specification so the cosmetic changes the first is that you have a code with you you need to reformat the program the for formatting to be done properly and most of the time the maintenance involves the changing of the names it can be variable name it can be data structure name even it can be database name so assign meaningful names and then there are certain logical conditions there are certain conditional conditions so these are all if i as do boils and uh, logical and and or and not and all these are used the you need to simplify this condition and if at all there is replay this go to just replace this go to that is you are to you are just trying to do the cosmetic changes for the program to look beautiful to be understandable so you need to reformat the program that is the layout should be made neat and you as i said you have to give meaningful names to the variables to the data structure to the function name should correspond to what the function is doing then there are complex one by one nested looped multiple nested conditional expressions you need to simplify these conditional statements and whenever possible rather than having multiple if else is you can use case statement so this is the switch case statement if your programming language allows use this switch case construct so in this reverse engineering what you want to do you want to first extract the design so in order to extract the design from the source code you need to understand the code first so there are certain automatic tools who can automate the process it can give you from the code the data flow and the control flow diagrams from the code itself so this is this is because the design would have lead to this code so ciao cia rigi bunch gen plus plus pbs and there are so many in the market there are some some open source also some are proprietary also so these automatic tools can be used then what you have to do you have to extract or find out the structure chart what is the main module what are the sub modules what are the library module so the module invocation sequence and the data interchange among the modules need to be extracted and finally when you have come up with the design now you have to extract the specification because once you understood the code the design has been extracted the next important task is to find out the requirement specification and this requirement specification will be the basis for the forward engineering okay so specification is the key and they may not be that much uh, true to what actually for the old system might be having but depending upon the design you have learned these are the specification so software maintenance process models maintenance activities are not uh, unique for each and every kind of projects or software or system it totally depends on what kind of what extent of what complexity of what way the modification request or change request is received the modification will be different depending upon the different kind of projects under question it also depends on the condition of the product how well structured it is do we have the document or not do we have the proper uh, say in in built uh, documentation or not in the code and various supporting document so we can have multiple software maintenance process models if the required changes are very small meager they are quite simple and the project is also uh, not very complex then we can do one thing we can directly go to the code and change it 
This is called patch working or bug fixing. So these changes are reflected also to the relevant document wherever you have to change it. And you more elaborate activities are required when the type of project change. This is about gathering the change requirement. You need to analyze the change requirement and then what way you are going to change the code you have to devise and define the strategies. Then application of these code change strategies. Finally, the integration and testing and the relevant document updation should be done. Whatever you have done, need to update in the present document. So IEEE model, it is saying, then once the modify request comes, you have to classify and identify the modify request, analyze the modification where it has to be done, do the designing, implement, do the testing again, and then the acceptance testing by the user, and then you deliver. So this is how the circle will go on in the maintenance activity. So first we will start by the change requirements gathering. We have to analyze the change requirement. That is how to change the code. You have to formulate these strategies. You cannot just go to the code and change it. And then see if the uh, original development team member is present, how to formulate strategies for code change. If the original development team member is there, it will reduce the working time. And especially the, when the code is very unstructured and you don't have the documentation properly. Also, if you have the old system available with you, that is the old system. Now, as a maintainer, uh, a maintenance engineer, it greatly helps you because it gives you the insight of the old system, working old system. Now, when you modify the system, you have the comparison. Okay, I use this is my modified system. This was the old system. This is what we have changed. And also, both systems are in front of you. So when you are debugging, program traces of both the system now can be compared so that you can localize the bugs and fix the bugs. So this is the, you know, if you have a team, team, uh, earlier team and earlier system. So you need to gather the change requirements, analyze the change requirements, devise the code change strategies. And as I said, you have to implement the code change uh, strategies application of this. And finally, testing and the documentation updation. So this is the software maintenance process model number one. There can be multiple uh, software maintenance model process models. So this model, if the software is a complex software and the complex maintenance projects are there. So we need to apply the software re-engineering. Okay. Because the amount to replace or the cost to replace the software is very high. So we need to start with a reverse engineering cycle and a forward engineering cycle. Both are combined and called as re-engineering. So forward engineering plus reverse engineering is nothing, nothing but the re-engineering. And here we will use or reuse, you can say, the existing code and the documents. So if you want to uh, you know, run or high jump, uh, long jump or high jump, then you take step back and then you jump. So when you take step back, that is the reverse engineering, then you jump forward, that is the forward engineering. So you are going from maintenance to the development code, code to design, you design to requirement analysis. So finally, you are trying to find out the requirement specification. Then you combine this with the present requirements and then you go with the SDLCs, whichever you want to follow. So this kind of software maintenance process models are preferable when amount of rework is quite significant. And software has a poor structure. So the rework, rework, if it is significant, we cannot just go and do the patchwork or fix the bug at local point. We need to reverse engineer and then find out the specification. And then only with the new specification, do the proper, uh, the application of software engineering principle that is called the forward engineering cycle. Forward engineering cycle comes only after the reverse engineering cycle. Okay. So this can be represented by a reverse engineering cycle. As I said, reverse engineering cycle always is uh, uh, giving rise to a forward engineering cycle. There is no uh, separate forward engineering cycle. So this is the existing software. First, you will start with the code, go to the design, then to the requirement specification, and then you will restructure. And then when you restructure, you go to the forward engineering, and then you produce the product called 
re-engineered software. Here also you see that code to design and design to code. First you have to start with code, go to design that is reverse engineering. Then again from design to code that is the forward engineering. This is whole process is re-engineering. So software engineering, re-engineering because many of the software products, they need a lot of maintenance. They are aging software. We are starting from code, you are going to design, design, you are going to requirement specification. Now you are adding the new requirements or the change request and then you are going again forward from requirement specification till the testing process that is called the forward, forward engineering. The reverse engineering plus the forward engineering is called as the software re-engineering. So during this reverse engineering, the old code is analyzed that is to every level of abstraction because we need to find out the or extract the module specifications. Now when you know the module, how is the cohesion coupling, how is the module being formed, what is the patterns you have used and what are the architecture, the module specification are analyzed in order to produce the design and then the design is analyzed that what requirement, what use cases has finally devised this design, has created this design and then you come to the original requirement specification. So once you have the original requirement specification which has come from design, which has come from the old code, now you add this with the change request. Now the change request or change proposals are then combined with the requirement specification. Now you arrive at the new requirement specification. Once you are having the requirement specification, it is just like creating a new software. So now you do the forward engineering to produce a new code. And during this, during the design modification, module specification coding, there is a substantial reuse because there are, there are reverse engineered products we can use. Process models for software re-engineering because whenever you have a big project and big proposals to change, you start with the reverse engineering. You already have a code with you and there can be document to support, to help you or there may not be. So you start with the code, go to the design and then you create the requirement specification. This is called the reverse engineering. Now you, you are with the requirement specification, you add it or combine it with the change requirements. Now you are having a new change, new requirement specification. So this new requirement specification, old plus change becomes new requirement specification. Now you can go ahead with the forward engineering to design and code. So software re-engineering, what are the advantages? First of all, whenever you are, you are doing things in a new way, you have a better design. You are creating documents, so you have a latest document. And since the performance and the enhancement and the efficiency uh, is always increased because you are making the new project with new technology, new thoughts and re-engineering is prefer preferable when the rework is quite high. That is, you cannot go with just patch fixing or bug fixing. And when your product is showing with respect to reliability and availability, the failure rates are quite high. Then re-engineering is always preferred, though it takes a lot of effort, but it is always advisable when the product is very difficult to understand. Re-engineering is the key. And since, as I said, when you have a better design, the efficiency, the efficacy, the performance, the other quality measures, they increase. This approach is, is more costly than the first approach, that is the first model, which is bus, bug fixing and patching. Empirical study says that the first process for just bug fixing and patching, this, this second, second one is only applied when you have a rework which is more than 15%. Process 1 is only applied when you have reverse, uh, rework less than 15%. Okay, this is all about uh, this discussion. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself.